Welcome to Jerseys for Social Justice, ETSU Athletics video series highlighting our black student athletes and coaches and their stories of being black in America. Today, the final video in our series. The goal of Jerseys for Social Justice has been to humanize our black student athletes and coaches and highlight them as members of our community, not just the entertainment you see on the field or court, to lend a voice to the black community here at ETSU on the issues that affect them most. Unfortunately, the issues that affect them most, social injustice, inequality, and racism, will continue to follow them. This video series will not fix those issues. We need next steps as an athletic department and university in order to make sure that we're at the forefront of these conversations and issues. Here to talk about those next steps, our Associate Director of External Operations within Athletics, Calvin Claggett, and the President of East Tennessee State University, Dr. Brian Nolan. Dr. Nolan, Calvin, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Nolan, I'd like to start with you. It's important to provide this platform for our student athletes and to hear their pain has been hard. To have these conversations has been important, but the steps for systematic change need to come after this and they need to be lined up one after another to make sure that we're maintaining for this community. I understand you're here to talk today about one of those issues. I, I am and I thank you for bringing a spotlight to issues that are not only facing our nation, but our front and center here at our institution um, our student athletes come to this institution full of hopes and dreams and aspirations for brighter futures for themselves, which ultimately will lead to brighter futures for their family. Many of their first in their family to come to college. Uh, they are blazing a trail that will open doors of opportunities for neighbors, friends, colleagues, and loved ones. But they bring with them, in many respects, um, a spotlight and a focus. A spotlight and a focus that may not altogether be appropriate because rather than being seen as student athletes or being seen as individuals with extraordinary gifts and talents, they're labeled. And those labels aren't fair, they're not appropriate, and in many respects, uh, they inhibit a student's ability to realize their goals and dreams. So we as an institution uh, have taken a series of proactive steps to build structures, not only to support our student athletes, but our campus community as a whole. Uh, earlier this year, we named Dr. Keith Johnson as the first Vice President for Equity and Inclusion in the history of the university. Around Dr. Johnson, we've created a strategic plan for equity and inclusion for the institution. We've announced new scholarships, speaker series, mentoring programs, counseling and support programs, outreach efforts. Uh, but one of the areas that has been really brought front and center is the need for our student athletes to be provided with support services, outreach opportunities, counseling services, and mentoring roles um, that maybe are a little bit unique by virtue of their position. Uh, so I am extremely excited and pleased to announce uh, that Calvin Clackett is moving into a leadership role, not only in the athletic department, but within the institution as a whole. Uh, he's been promoted within the department, but across the institution, he'll serve in a capacity as special assistant to the Vice President for Equity and Inclusion. In that role, he'll provide a voice, he'll provide a lens um, and I couldn't think of a more perfect person to do this than Calvin. Really excited by the opportunity to announce this new role uh, and these new responsibilities for someone uh, that is poised, that is positioned, and that is ready. Calvin, congratulations. Thank you. I know this Thank is you. very important to you and it's something you've wanted to get involved in for a long time. Firstly, so what does this position mean to you? Um, Mike, thank you. Dr. Nolan, thank you. Um, this position means everything. Um, as a black man in America, the experiences that I have uh, and have had growing up, and not only that, uh, some here in East Tennessee have, have shaped that passion, and it's charged me uh, to step up and, and be an advocate, and not only that, but to serve uh, the institution and the region as a whole. So this is just another thing in my service uh, to East Tennessee, and I look forward to doing so for many years. Many people experience racism. Many people are discriminated against, especially in the black community in this country. People step up like yourself to lead on these issues. You talked about a little where the passion came from. Expand on that a bit more if you can. Why is this the right thing for you? This is absolutely the right thing for me um, because I believe that I have a gift for uniting people. And I think um, spreading love is, is the most important thing that we can do in our country right now. For us, if we can um, have conversations, dialogue, and, and pour into one another, um, I believe that we'll make this place incredibly better than the way we got it. And um, particularly for me, through my experiences um, of being called uh, derogatory names and uh, going to places and being in rooms where you know you get stared at uh, because you're the only uh, black male in the room, uh, feeling uncomfortable, 
Um, but I want to be able to break those barriers and be able to go up and have conversations with people so that they get to see what's in my heart and I get to see what's in theirs. And hopefully um, that is how step by step we can change the world. You've had conversations with student athletes throughout your time here about exactly what you mentioned, being called derogatory names, being discriminated against, being treated unfairly in this country. There's no other way to put it. How important have those conversations been with those student athletes and how big of a thing do you think it is to have someone like yourself in a position where they can come to you, they can trust in you, and they know that you've experienced it so you can speak to the issues that they're facing? Absolutely, Mike. Um, you know, first and foremost, our student athletes are, are my why. And uh, I wake up every day, brush my teeth, and, and head into the office um, thinking about the ways that I can impact them in the best way possible. Um, whether that's a, a ear to listen or a shoulder to cry on, um, no matter the topic of conversation, but as, as it pertains to this, um, providing them the, the outlets and the resources so that they can advance in their careers and they can advance you know, athletically um, with the peace of mind knowing that they are safe here. Um, that's, the, that's the most important thing for us. Dr. Nolan, you've seen Calvin grow from, you mentioned it, the bright-eyed, bushy-tailed 18-year-old freshman from Chattanooga to now leading what is perhaps in this country, I would say definitely in this country, the most important issue facing this nation, facing this community here at ETSU, racial equality, and he's leading that within the highest uh, concentration of black student athletes in the university. I know this is a special moment for you too because you've seen him grow. You talked about the growth that you've seen. You've seen him get degrees from this university as well, have experiences here at ETSU. This in a way is his second home um, and he's made it that and the campus community has embraced him for that. Just talk about what this means to see Calvin take on this very big issue for athletics. Given the significant leadership role that our student athletes and the athletic department plays in the community, um, we felt that it was necessary and appropriate for there to be a voice, a face, and a place within the athletic department, not only that you could look to for leadership, but our student athletes could look to for advice and counsel sometimes outside of the team unit. Uh, because within the team unit, it's either tennis or volleyball or golf. Um, and if a player or a student is really s struggling with something, it's difficult to find a place to turn. So now there's a place to turn, a trusted source, a voice, um, a confidential home in which individuals can turn to just share feelings. Calvin stepped up to lead. Um, this is a natural leadership moment. And he used a critical word a little bit ago, service. Uh, this isn't an individual role. This isn't an individual title. This is service to an institution, to a community, and to students that not too long ago, he was a member of the student body. So for me, this is as much a service moment as it is a leadership moment. Um, and so often people put entities first. Um, I think what you will see and have seen throughout his career at the university is the university comes first and we all are in service to that institution and its issues and values. So really, really excited and proud uh, and look forward to seeing the great things that you're gonna do. Let's talk about some of those great things. Okay. This is a big job yes. and you know the urgency of it. We talked about next steps at the outset of our conversation. Give us a look into what some of those next steps may look like. Some may have already begun, but empowering these student athletes and supporting them is of the utmost importance, not only now, but it always is here at ETSU, specifically with the black community, the minority population within athletics and university wide. What do you have planned? So um, first I would like to say that I've been working with Dr. Keith Johnson on a strategic plan for equity and inclusion for our department. Um, you know, some of those things that that are in that plan we've already accomplished, such as 100% voter registration rate um, for our student athletes. Uh, we're gonna launch a mentoring program for our income and minority students. We're gonna partner with the Multicultural Center um, on, on what a summer bridge uh, type program could look like in our department. Um, we're gonna do a buck to the ballot campaign. I know it's one thing to get everybody registered to vote, but uh, we wanna get everybody to the polls in our, in our apartment. We're gonna encourage that. And not only that, but have an impact on our community and our region uh, to encourage them to get to the polls as well. Um, we've, we've done tons and tons and tons and tons of research on uh, best practices to retain and recruit uh, minority student athletes and all of that, but minority talent and administration. I think that's a very important thing when our student athletes are walking up and down the hallway to see uh, faces who resemble their cultural backgrounds. 
Um, so, you know, department demographic uh, 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 tracking is going to be a, a very important thing. We're going to enhance the way that um, that we do search committees, and we're going to enhance everything from uh, student athlete experience to education uh, regarding equity and inclusion. Uh, recently, as a department, we did uh, an entire administrative coaching staff, a GA top to bottom uh, diversity and inclusion training through Gen Fry Talks. And we're going to continue those conversations uh, with our student athletes and provide them with the resources uh, via whether it be lunch and learn, chat and chew. Um, so that they can uh, grow as a family together and we're going to empower them through the WIN program. WIN program is going to be something that is going to give them opportunities to have life skill development, character development. Um, they're going to learn about social justice issues and partner with uh, SAC to, so that they're able to um, help us move not only the department, but the university as a whole forward in its efforts of equity and inclusion. The highest percentage of black student, or black students, I should say, on a campus um, is generally in athletics. ETSU is no exception. So when you're naming Calvin Clegg to this position, and he's going to work with Dr. Keith Johnson, the VP of Equity and Inclusion here at the university, what are your goals for these student athletes over the next few weeks, next few months, next few years as they go through their ETSU journey? Well, I'm going to step back up and look at this from a university perspective because um, as we look at uh, the goals that we have for the institution, um, they are institutional goals. They're not unit A, unit B, or unit C goals. Um, and our student athletes, as I said before, are students first. So the full level of services that are available to an undergraduate bluegrass student from Memphis are available to um, a quarterback from Ottawa. So as we look at the university's goals and objectives, our foremost goal and objective is to be recognized uh, by HEED as an institution of excellence that puts a focus and an accent on equity and inclusion. Uh, quite often here in the Appalachian Highlands, we look at this little cocoon that we live in. Um, it's a pretty safe place. It's a place that's welcoming. Uh, it's a place that gives people the opportunity to explore, to learn, uh, to test to make mistakes, to pick themselves back up and to try again. But we've got to prepare students for what's beyond our mountains. Um, not all of our student athletes are going to go on to the NFL or the PGA Tour or the NBA. Um, a lot of them are going to become teachers. They're going to become social workers. They're going to become nurses and physicians. They're going to pursue a diversity of careers, but they're going to be leaders. So how can we prepare our students and our student athletes to lead in a world that's going to look very different 30 years from now than it does today. Dr. Nolan, for your support of this video series, the athletic community here at ETSU and the black community on our campus, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Yeah, I thank you all for, for putting not only this series together, um, but for putting the entire effort together. These are unique times in our nation's history. And how can this institution lead the way it's laid, led throughout its history? And I'm excited to be a small part of a bigger puzzle. Calvin, congratulations. Thank you. Very excited to see what you have planned. Uh, very inspiring to see what you've already done. You. Um, what's ahead, I know, are very big things for the athletic department and the black community within it, as well as the minority community as a whole. And your work around campus as well, I'm sure, is going to be felt by many. Congratulations again, and thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Appreciate you.